respirator program and that they are using filtration systems if that's feasible, reducing levels of physical activity, especially strenuous and heavy work, and just making accommodations for people with things like air filters and HVA systems and other things. Doug Parker is Assistant Secretary of Labor for Occupational Safety and Health and Director of OSHA. Doug, thanks. You're very welcome. This is Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm e. Martinez. And I'm Leila Faldin. Remember, coming up at 2 o'clock today, a special Notes from America with Kai Wright. Black Texans were the last to hear about freedom, but they knew exactly how to claim it. Now, in a Juneteenth celebration from Houston, Kai Wright will talk to the folks there, the people working to preserve the history of black self-emancipation. It's coming up at 2 on 93.9 FM, AM 820, or live streaming at WNYC.org. 70 and sunny right now on this Juneteenth, partly sunny. And 81 for a high. It's WNYC in New York. Support for WNYC comes from Charles P. Rogers, New York bed makers for seven generations at 17th Street, Manhattan, and Route 17, New Jersey. Handcrafted mattresses and beds since 1855. More at charlesprogers.com. Marketplace Morning Report is coming up next, and then in 10 minutes at 9 o'clock, it's the BBC News Hour on WNYC. Let's check in with London to see what they're working on. London, good morning. Good morning, WNYC. I'm Razia Iqbal. On today's News Hour, nine Egyptian men accused of people smuggling have appeared in court in Greece in connection with last week's migrant boat disaster. And the UN classifies the situation of women and girls in Afghanistan as gender persecution and apartheid. We'll speak to the UN Special Rapporteur. BBC News Hour coming up at 9 on WNYC. On the next All of It, for Juneteenth, a day celebrating freedom, we'll discuss someone who has continued the fight for rights a century after enslaved people were emancipated, Martin Luther King Jr. Writer Jonathan Eig has written the first comprehensive biography of King in three decades. He joins me to discuss King Alive. I'm Allison Stewart. Join me for All of It, weekdays at noon on WNYC. When will all states recognize Juneteenth? Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Angie, dedicated to helping homeowners get home projects not just done, but done well. Reviews, pricing, and booking at Angie.com or on the Angie app. And by Amazon Business, helping provide a smarter, easier way to get the supplies businesses need to thrive. Amazon Business, your partner for smart business buying. From Marketplace, I'm Novasafo, in for David Brancaccio. Happy Juneteenth, a commemoration of the day in 1865 when enslaved African Americans in Galveston, Texas, learned they were free. They were among the last groups of enslaved people to be freed in the United States. Juneteenth became a federal holiday two years ago, but about half the states in the country have yet to adopt it as an official state holiday. Efforts to change that are ongoing. Here's Marketplace's Henry Epp. Minnesota Senate President Bobby Joe Champion sponsored a bill signed into law this year making Juneteenth a state holiday, meaning state workers get a paid day off. He knows there's a cost, but... The benefits outweigh the costs, right? You know, productivity is increased when people feel good about their workplace. And he hopes private companies follow suit, too. The holiday is an opportunity for celebration and education, says Michigan State Representative Helena Scott, whose Juneteenth measure just passed last week. Slavery really is a stain on our society. So I think by acknowledging this, recognizing it, and really learning about it, that, that's the whole point of celebrating June 19th. But at least 20 states have yet to make Juneteenth a legal holiday. There's precedent for this in Martin Luther King Day, says Dartmouth history professor Matthew Delmont. Understanding that it took years and years of activism and education to finally get all states to adopt it, Juneteenth could likely follow a similar trajectory. It was 17 years before MLK Day was an official holiday in all 50 states. I'm Henry Epp for Marketplace. Let's do the numbers. Wall Street closed for the Juneteenth holiday. Overseas markets in Asia fell 
Ahead of U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's meeting with China's leader Xi Jinping, the Shanghai Composite Index closed down half a percent. The Hang Seng Index dropped six tenths percent, and Japan's Nikkei sank one percent. That meeting between Blinken and Xi produced no news of major breakthroughs, but the Chinese leader said he hopes to see a quote sound and steady China-U.S. relationship. There were also some words of rebuke. China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi told Blinken that the U.S. has a misconception of China. From Beijing, the BBC's Stephen McDonnell has more. China's Foreign Minister told the U.S. Secretary of State that relations between their countries were at their lowest point since the re-establishment of diplomatic ties. There are genuine fears that armed conflict between the superpowers is possible, so systems are needed to avoid this. On his trip to Beijing, Antony Blinken has now also met Wang Yi, China's top diplomat. They shook hands inside a hall at the Jiayu Tai State Guest House before heading into a closed door meeting. That's the BBC's Stephen McDonnell. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks delivers comprehensive cybersecurity protection while automating cyber defense to stop threats so organizations can thrive. Learn more at paloaltonetworks.com. And by Odoo, focused on providing all-in-one open-source business management software with fully integrated applications for every business need. More at odoo.com. And by Fidelity, a dedicated Fidelity advisor can help create a wealth plan for a full financial picture. Investment minimums apply. Fidelity Brokerage Services LLC. In Argentina, workers have been on strike for weeks, demanding higher wages to keep up with soaring inflation, which is more than 100% in the South American country. People there are no strangers to economic upheaval, but many are now desperately struggling to pay for the basics. The BBC's Valley Fontaine reports from Buenos Aires. In the last 12 months, inflation in Argentina rose by over 100%, causing the value of the Argentine currency, the peso, to continue plummeting. Hola, Gabriel. Muy bien, gracias. Muchas gracias. Gabriel owns his own apartment and is considered middle class in Argentina. Y bueno, eh, el mío particular, porque yo Sometimes I say I'm going to probably have a good meal at lunchtime and then some biscuits before I go to bed around having lunch and proper dinner and then uh, everything is going up so I do get quite worried because that means I will have to sell my apartment and go somewhere else but the problem is at the moment nobody's got money to buy an apartment so the only way to survive is stay put and tighten your belt as much as you can. Argentina began the 20th century as one of the richest countries in the world. By 2001, a struggling economy led to public debt, social unrest, the collapse of the banking system, and the government confiscating bank accounts. In the years since, the blue dollar, which refers to Argentina's black market, U.S. dollar exchange rate, emerged due to a lack of access to foreign currencies But buying dollars is not an option for everyone. It's pretty difficult being an immigrant. When I arrived here in 2017, the dollar was 16 pesos. And now, 437. 26-year-old Brenda left Venezuela because of high inflation and came to Argentina. I feel like this is a second Venezuela, a country that once were so welcoming with immigrants is now losing all these people because young people like me it's leaving to europe or just united states the price of food has been hit hardest since january it's risen by 41 percent so much so that victor often has to survive without cash i exchange things which i don't uh, need like trousers and shoes chain shoes and what sort of things do you swap them for fruits, uh, vegetables, and meat. According to Argentina's National Statistics Agency, INDEC, 40% of the population are living in poverty. This means a family of four are living on less than $760 per month, of which just under half of that figure would be needed to buy basic food. That's the BBC's Valley Fontaine reporting. Tomorrow is World Refugee Day, and to mark the occasion, some 40 companies are pledging to hire more than 13,000 refugees in Europe. 
That's a start. The United Nations says there are more than 100 million refugees worldwide, including 12 million from Ukraine. I'm Nova Safo with the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media. WNYC is supported by Willing Hearts, Helpful Hands Caregiver Support.